Greetings YouTubers, welcome to the channel. Well, all projects seem like they are on the weekends and that's what this is. This is a weekend project and this is my 2010 F-150. I've had it for about a year or so. Running pretty good, but we got a transmission leak and uh, a lot of these F-150s, this is a 2010 4.6 and a lot of these have uh, metal lines that run from the transmission up to the cooler. And luckily for me, I have this, uh, I don't know if this is factory, I think it is factory uh, transmission cooler, which is really nice. you got to have those if you're going to be uh, towing anything. And it just makes the transmission last longer because it runs cooler. But what we're going to replace is part of this line here. Um, I've gone ahead and patched it. And it's always made me nervous if I get down here and show you my patch job. It's actually held up, but... Uh, <laughs> A pretty flexible line. These are a 5 8 uh, lines here. So what we're going to do today, we're going to replace this entire line from right about here. we got to get these disconnect uh, clips here uh, kind of unhooked. And this line runs through here. It runs up under the uh, steering uh, mount here. The uh, rack and pinion runs down along the side of the engine. Then bends right about there. Then kind of goes down in front of the transmission on the other side and bolts on the other side of the transmission. So there's plenty of room. Uh, the only thing you have to kind of fight with is there is a bracket somewhere right about here. It has one little 10 millimeter bolt in. I'm going ahead and taking that out because I had to release this starter wire earlier when I had the engine out. I just never put it back in. There's a bolt up here. Actually, it's right there where my finger is. It goes in. That'll hold that solid up in there with this wiring harness, but you don't have to worry too much about that. Let me show you the other side of the transmission. And here is the bottom of the transmission. I'm laying on the driver's side, and there's where I said it bends. It comes right through here. And you just have one bolt here, and this bracket housing assembly actually holds this whole thing in. There's some O-rings on these uh, two lines right there. And that's what keeps that in. So uh, we're going to try to replace this, and we'll see what we can get into. Uh, there are some plastic clips here. You pop those off. They just kind of keep the line in, in together in one place. And right here, there's one bracket. There's a 10 millimeter bolt up here. Actually, it's a transmission bolt. Uh, you can pretty much get to take that out there. And this line, thing should the whole system should come out. Now I do know some Fords are a little bit different under there on the transmission. Some of them just have two lines going into the transmission. And you have to use disconnect clip tools to pull those out. So you'll have to check and see what you got. Like I said, this is the 2010. Now here is <laughs> the line. Um, I think I picked this up for 100 and. $40? I've had it almost five months and I forget how much I paid for it, but I'll put the description in. And it's pretty long and uh, we'll set it down here. And here are the lines on this end that we have to kind of disconnect up here and slide on. I'm going to try to make a tool because I'm too cheap to have anything like this. It actually works well. I always make tools it seems like. And I don't think I can get one today. And the other thing is here, there is this piece of plastic here on the bottom that's bolted up under here. This thing's in a, a very annoying. I would just take it out. It's just two uh, 13 millimeter bolts, I believe. And, and you just have so much more room up under here to lay and work and all that. So having said all that, here is where the lines connect. And I'm gonna try to make a tool and see if I can just slide this down and just pop these lines out. And this plastic piece here, you could take it out of the way, but I think I can work around it. I got one of the clips out, but it was a bear to get out. So it's kind of loose here. We can work around that. And also these guys here actually hold these lines together. Well, they're just safety features here in case you don't get them all the way in there. And I just barely pulled on this one here and it broke right in half. So I had to find me another one. Maybe the parts store has them, I don't know. So that's where we're at. So what we're going to do for now, first things first, is see if we can get this disconnected here somehow. You can see it's moving a little bit, but I'm going to have to use both hands. I got some disconnect tool clips in our plastic ones, but Ford has their own. So I've seen different guys on YouTube, you know, doing different wet things and I'm disconnecting these. So I'm just going to see what I can do. Maybe I'll share it with you and Maybe it'll help you out. So let me see if we can get this, uh, let's, let's see. Uh, yeah, let me see what I got and we'll see if we can get these uh, disconnected here. 
All right, so here's all the stuff I have. That is not going to work, but I can tell you right now because that is too long because you can't get these down below this little section right here. You can see this is just way too long. I might be able to... Well, I could cut one of these down a little bit and probably make it work, but if I can force it down in there far enough just to get it past the clip, uh, down in there to release that little clip springy thingy, I might be able to get it out. So let me see if I can maybe use one of these here. All right, so far, no good. This one would have probably worked, but the bottom of it is too thick. It takes like a 5 thousandths uh, thickness here for that to go over, so... But this one here, these are the, and this one here is the thickness that I need. See how thin it is? Boy, if I can maybe just open this up wide enough and get it started, it might release that. I know, Nathan, don't be so cheap, buy tools. But hey, you know what? I wouldn't have what I have if I didn't do what I've done in the past, right? I <laughs> figured that one out. Let me see if I can work with this one here. All right, that. It's not going to work either, but I'm spinning it. I got part of it down in there, and I'm cleaning out all the dirt that's down in there. Now I can actually see what's going on there. You can see that they're cleaning it out really good there. You know, if, if I wanted to destroy this, if I cut this down about halfway, I think this would probably work. So you know what we're going to do? That's right, we're going to trim this down and see if we can get this to work by... By just shoving it the rest of the way down in there. I think this will work here. These are cheap, so we'll try that. All right, guys, one step in the right direction. We've got that loose. What I did, well, what I attempted to do, I trimmed this down. Wouldn't quite go on there because when this is opened up real wide, it's not a perfect circle on the edges here. You know, this is plastic. I can replace it. I took a piece of tin, just regular old uh, tin that you you know, thin tan, and try to make something like that. Well, that was too weak. Then I had this old license plate light, and it's aluminum, it's a little bit thicker. And I made a second one here. And you can see there it is, and uh, it come loose. And there's what I made. You had to kind of fool around with it a little bit, make sure it's in a perfect circle. But that's basically what I made. So we get the other one off, we got it made. So I want to just show you, you know, if you use your head and think about things, sometimes, just some, almost sometimes, things will work out just the way you want. All right, so let's go ahead and get the other one off. But for now, we've got the transmission line. And you can see it only has to go past this top here about one-eighth of an inch. That's all it is. So, wow, can't believe I got it. All right, let's go ahead and get the second one off. Hey, let me know where you're watching from right now. All right, guys, sometimes I get carried away thinking that I can fix everything and make everything work, but uh, I made it work. What I did, just so you know, you're going to lose a little fluid, so put something down there to catch it. What I found out was when you cut these, make these, you got to make sure they're not touching because you want a little bit of a gap because you got to make sure it's squeezed. <laughs> You gotta make sure it's squeezing around the entire line. Leave a little bit of gap like right there. But it's out, so. All right, now this is just for if you're stranded and you're in a garage, nothing's open for two days, you can try to make something like this and uh, make it work and get these two lines off, so. But if you're in a hurry, my advice is just go out and buy this line uh, connector, this disconnect quick connector for about 20 bucks. It's a tool you can probably get at the parts store, so. But uh, that's how I got my lines off. And one other thing is uh, I actually took a little screwdriver and actually made sure it was going down and I kind of forced it down in there past that so it would actually go down in there. Because sometimes on the back side you might think, well, it's, it's, it should be going in. It's just not round enough. And I'll take a pair of you know, pliers like this and kind of make sure it's nice and round before I slide it on here and bend it and shove it in there. So, yeah. It works. And you're probably wondering why advice grips here. Well, with all this fluid, it's slippery. And this is just a little baby pair. I just kind of gripped that so I can actually hold that. Keep from turning because this whole thing moves. And you can hold this with one hand and take your other hand work that clip down in there and try to break that loose. So that's what that's for. 
All right, so I got all this junk unhooked, got it out of the way to make it easier to slide all this backwards once we get it across the front of the cross member here, the frame. And uh, what I'll do next is get back here. There's one bracket on the side of the transmission. We'll unhook that bolt there that's attached to this line. All right, guys, I apologize by the light there if I can just block it out a little bit. But this bracket that holds this line on this side of the passenger side has a 12 millimeter, I think it's a 14 millimeter bolt in it. What I did, I just kind of bent the ears on the back of this and just kind of, it wraps around this here. Just pull this round back like this and you don't have to take it out. And now those are free. All we have to do is go on the other side now and take the bolt out on that side. So basically I took a little screwdriver and I got this little hammer and I tapped. Well, those little tiny ears kind of wrap around that bracket and loosen one of them and it'll get loose and then you can probably just take a screwdriver up in there and pull it apart and unwrap it on that line. All right guys, so I got my 10 millimeter socket and now we're going to get to just break this one bolt off. And that's really that's all that's holding these lines on. Which is pretty amazing. I, I would have thought they would have been something a little more tighter, better. But just take your time getting that bolt out there. I don't like the way it feels, but they probably got Loctite on it or something. Let's see where we're at. All right, it's, it's pretty loose. Apologize for the lighting. Maybe I can lighten it up in post production here. And let's see, bolt's just about out, I guess. I did finally bust my ratcheting ratchet, my 12 volt. The head stripped on it. I, I yanked on it too hard. So now I'm back to hand tools. Hey, most of you working on vehicles anyway in your yard are probably all don't have electric hand tools to begin with, you know. A pretty long bolt. Wow. Where are we at? Yeah, it's a long bolt. So I'll just tell you my life story while I take this bolt out. All right, so these are the original lines and they all rust, especially if we're on the, the, the radiator because that's where all the heat cycles are. Now put a rag or something under here because you're going to lose a little bit of fluid or a bucket or something. Good lord, how long is this bolt? I'll shake it, there it comes. All right, there's the bolt. Yeah, it's a 10 millimeter. So let me stick it somewhere where I won't. Stick it somewhere where I will lose it. Yeah, you know how it is with bolts. All right, so pop this off here. See how much fluid comes out. Yep, yep, a little bit, there we go. I'll catch it here in rag. And there it is, we got it out. Sorry, you probably couldn't see that, guys, but we'll take it out here in the sunlight and look at it. So, all right, so now we'll go ahead and try to fish this out. We're just going to pull it straight back uh, toward the back of the vehicle. That's really the only way you're going to get this out. So, let's do that. All right, guys, I'm just going to let the camera roll. I'm going to try to slide this out and try to keep my fat head out of a shot. So, I mean, I know they, this all goes together when they put the engine and the transmission in, but this guy, I'm sure we can get this out. I mean, it has to be a way to get this out. it everywhere. It's too bad. All right, I'll just keep pulling on it. Well, okay. There we go. So I spun it around halfway. So far, so good. Not bad, I got it. So when you go to put it back in, you're gonna have to 
start it like this, then spin it halfway around and spin it back around like this. It's where it normally should be, so let's take that and look at it. All right, now I'm gonna get back up under here and grab it. All right, there it is. The only thing that kind of caught me was right here, this kink. So when you go to put this back in, it's probably best to have it upside down, start it in like this, get it past the frame, the front of the frame here. Then once it gets past that, then spin this around like that. And then shove the rest of the way forward. And that's the way it should go in. So here's the, the only bolt that holds that in there. It's got a double O-ring set up here. And one here, and like I said, it wasn't leaking, but uh, all the rust is always up here near the front of the radiator and all that. And uh, that's it. So, you know, I got to look, and I don't think there is a clip up here. Uh, there might have been one 10 millimeter bolt on the side of the engine. Uh, I think there was. Maybe it's broken off, but you may have to look. If yours are hung up, check right about here. There's probably. A little bit of a bracket with a 10 millimeter bolt that blocks to the, uh, that bolts to the block of the engine but there it is so let's go ahead and open up the new one here and check it out oh before we do that let me show you something here i thought this was a spring but actually there's a little clip like of a deal right here see that on the top there you can move that clear around it's like a like a metal clip but i thought that was a spring but anyway you put a tool in there and you spread that apart and that releases everything, so that's kind of interesting there. Also, one more thing before we open that up. Make a mental note, or kind of watch your top line here, where it goes. Trace that. That one goes on my good side. You don't want to reverse these because you can blow junk back into your transmission, into the case and everything else. A good one goes on this side, so kind of make a mental note. Remember where those hoses go. You don't want any trash in there kind of going back through the pump and the valve body and all that. At least that's a good theory I think of. All right, let's get that out of the way. By the way, this is a Dorman. There is a part number. I ordered this November, uh, gosh, it's been seven, eight, it's been eight months. Uh, no, this is, yeah, it's been about six months. So here we are, we're looking at it. Here's the bracket. They actually gave me a bracket that I told you to bend, but you can see these little ears right here. So, or you can just take yours completely off. There's a plastic clip there. I'm going to take that off so I don't lose it. And here is the other bracket I was wondering about. There is another bracket that goes up on the front of the engine. So what I'll probably do for now is just take this off and slide this whole thing in. Because this might get caught up on something. Then I'll slide this back on. You can actually bend this little ear right there take this off. But there it is. Now before you put this up in there, get you some tape. Plug these holes up. Wrap them up. Because when you're sliding these forward, you don't want no junk to get falling, you know, stuff getting in there and plugging this up and messing up your transmission. So I'm going to put some tape over that. And we'll go ahead and we'll start sliding this in through the engine, bottom of the engine bay, and hopefully we'll have a pretty decent success doing it. We'll see. All right, so i got the tape over the ends here so we don't get any dirt in there. And I've got everything off. I tuck this piece here off. I'm going to leave this on because I think I can get this one out of the way. If I can, I'll just take the bolt out of the other one and we'll just bolt this on the transmission. And that's about it. We're going to start it in like that. We'll get it started. Once it goes so far, then I'll spin this around like this. And it should go all the way past the frame. The reason I didn't put anything up here, I want this to flex a little bit in case it gets hung up. If I put something here, this will be too stiff. And these won't move. So I leave the little flex, a little fl a flex, a flexing here, if you will. If you will, that's what I'm trying to say. Let it move a little bit. It might actually help it go over some of the areas that's a little tight in there. So I'll get in there and we'll see what we can do. All right, guys. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I got them in. It wasn't fun. Forget about spinning them around. Just start them the best you can back here. And, and you can see they're going through here. It's tight. I mean, I had to wiggle them and pull a little bit. Part of the problem is right there, that piece gets hung up on the, the exhaust right there. You have to go back in there and kind of push in on it and kind of try to get it to go on this side of the exhaust. When it does, it'll go up higher and it gives you more wiggle room. And here's the front of it. 
right here are the lines so the tape held and the other part of the problem is there's a wiring harness here that has this plastic shield on it goes to the starter probably not going to be able to see it there but it's right here mine's loose i take out those two 10 millimeter bolts you can see i can shake the whole thing it's loose that gives you a little more room because part of this line hits the bottom of this right here so all I gotta do now is go back in the back and bolt that on the side of the transmission, kind of get it tight, and kind of mock everything up. And I also did go ahead and take out this bracket bolt. And I'm just gonna use my new one, which is right there. And uh, we'll call this success. Now I did have a brainstorm. One thing you can do if, you, if, you can, if you're kind of afraid to get into the problem I have, is go ahead and take off these two motor mount bolts right here. Well, there's two motor, mo motor mount bolts right there. You take these two out and maybe just lift the engine up on this one side a couple of inches or so with a jack. I know the oil pan right here. You know, get a block of wood. That would probably give you enough room to really uh, help you a lot better. So you might want to try that first, but you can still do what I did and say some cussing words off camera and so forth. So it's in. It wasn't pretty, but I got it in. Yeah. All right, as I like to say, it's out with the old and in with the better. And that 10 millimeter is bolted is tight. Seals look good. And now we'll go ahead and check out the front here. Line it up, make sure we can get those together, the hoses. All right, I know you probably can't see that, but we'll get our bracket on there on the side of the uh, transmission. That's back in, so now we can go up front. If we have to bend the lines a little bit to get it to line up with the uh, transmission cooler lines in, we'll be okay. But this is nice and snug all the way around. It ain't going nowhere. All right, I got the tape off. This one goes on this side here. So we can get it in there. I have to use, move the camera. All right, let's try this again. I just can't grip that line enough to make it hold in my hand it slips so let's go ahead and see if we can get the old vice grips out and we'll use those and try to get this in there good lord why it's so hard oh i think it already went in okay oh wow okay it went right in i didn't even hear i, heard, I thought i heard a click that looks about all right, I guess. So, uh, it's on. <laughs> the big question is, will it leak? We'll find out. All right, we'll go ahead and hook up the other one. All right, before we go ahead and hook up this other one, I'll take this tape off. But before we do that, I will tell you this. Since I did bend the lines a little bit, trying to get them through there, you know, you're moving them and you, you're going to bend them a little bit. I did have to bend these back this way just a little bit to get them to kind of line up so don't be surprised if you have to do that this is not a perfect oem line but the lines look a lot bigger it looks like the the flow is going to be a lot better so i'm trying to say as i lay upside down like a monkey here and this one here i just had to bend it back a little bit and seems like nothing's hitting it's so good so i'll go ahead and get the tape off of this one here and we'll go ahead and connect this one up here and finish this up we'll start it up and see if it's going to leak hopefully no leaks all right so there's the one i just did and there's the one we're about to do and you see how this stick this sticks down in the tube quite a bit and it comes up over this and clips on this right here this is why i thought this one wasn't going to work but it's actually down in there farther than it looks this part has to go down past the o end of the o-rings and then it catches right there so now let's go ahead and get this one on all right ah, get back here I wish I could have got this plastic out of here, but that's all right. So there we go. We're going to slide this up in there. See, it goes in there quite a ways. Now we'll see if I hear it click this time. Yep, there it went. Yeah, it's about the same distance as the other one. So, all right. Hey, I like it when a plan comes together. How about you? All right. This job, if you do it yourself, buy your own transmissions line. Uh, the Ford dealer won $580. I think I got the transmissions lines for i don't know 150 i'll put the price in here in a second for you but 
All right, so let's go ahead and start it up, see if we have any leaks. All right, let's get started. You might as well watch the success or the horror <laughs> with me together. And uh, it usually starts right up pretty fast. And uh, if we don't have any leaks, then I'll be really happy. So, key in the hole here. And we'll run out there real quick and look. Not sure nothing's leaking anywhere. I can see right under the transmission here. I don't see nothing there. Up here's what I'm really wanting to see. All right, nothing there. I think we got her, and uh, I have to crawl up under here like this in the dirt. Things I do for you guys on YouTube. All right, no leaks there. All right, we got our clips on, so I think we can call this job a success. And we'll put her down in gear here, make sure she's gonna be okay. All right, she goes in gear. No problem. All right. So I am so happy I did this. I can't believe I waited all this time to do that. So worked out pretty good. So no leaks. All I gotta do is put these back on. I'll order a new one here, the one I broke. So all I have to do now is go ahead and put on a couple of little clamps here. And let's see, probably go ahead and put this guy on there somewhere so it doesn't rattle and uh this job is done guys so i hope you enjoyed this video it wasn't a perfect video but if you're really sketched out about getting those lines up under the uh, engine like that like i said you could take those two bolts out of that transmission mount and probably lift that engine up a little bit and it'll probably give you enough room to really make your job easier but at least this is how i'm doing it and i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh no point in me showing you anything else here. I'm just going to go ahead and clean up and finish up and wrap up. So uh, thanks for watching. And until my next video, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you later. And also, a FYI, I have discovered, you can't reuse these old guys here, these safety clips. You're going to have to go get the Dorman one. I guess Dorman makes their own. The problem is when you try to put these on, it hits. That little lip on the top. The bottom of this will go on, but the top won't go in there all the way because you see how the angle that's made? Well, this needs to be just a little wider in here. So apparently Dorman makes her own unless it's a defect. But I'll have to check into that. And when I find the answer, I will certainly pin what I did and let you guys know. But yeah, you can't reuse these. The bottom will go on, but the top won't go on there. It'll just, as far as I can get it, right there, and it won't stay. So, just so you know.